In this video, I'm going on a great Italian adventure. I don't know too much about it. My friend Jim, uh, the Also Driven channel, is kind of responsible for this. He tells me he's going to turn up any minute in a luxurious Italian transport. So uh, I'm just kind of waiting for him to turn up. Uh, I don't think it's any of these vehicles. These don't look very Italian. So what's it going to be? Uh, and where are we going? It's going to be fun to... Oh. Okay, okay. Uh, this is our luxurious steed. Uh, hello, sir. Hello, I've had enough, you can drive. Okay, right, uh, let's find out where we're going and uh, we'll get going and I'll tell you what this little Cinquecento is like to drive. Right then, so we've got our uh, essential um, Fiat Dangly. Mm -hmm. uh, there may be a Fiat theme to this. Um, Weekend, well, not weekend, is it? It's Sunday, so start of a week. But uh, stage one, where are we going? Stage one, Cambridge. Okay, and how far away is that? Uh, according to the uh, GPS, it is four hours and 31 minutes, 231 miles. Okay, in a tiny, tiny little car. Oh well, what could possibly go wrong? Everything. Yeah, and then. What, what are we doing once we get to Cambridgeshire? Then we're getting about three hours sleep and then mm -hmm. we're going to get up um, really in the middle of the night and we're going to go to Stansted. It's always the middle of the night, isn't it? Yes, we're, we're actually jumping on a plane. We are not taking this vehicle all the way to Italy. Um, I don't know if I'm glad about that or not. I haven't driven it for long enough yet, <laughs> but uh, it doesn't feel like the most powerful vehicle. But... I have driven this to Gdansk. Oh, okay. That is uh, some distance. Uh, in the old Poland. Yeah, I'm back to the factory where it was made. Oh, lovely. It's only done 45,000 miles. Quite a few of them must have been done on that trip. <laughs> yeah, I think it was about 4,000 miles. Wow. So we yeah, we, we are um, flying to Turin. Mm -hmm. So uh, looking forward to that. And we'll, sorry, the mount is a little... Um, yeah. My phone is very heavy. Yeah, we're going to just take that little bit again, just balance that out better. There we go. There you beautiful. Go. Anyway, right, off you go. Yeah, my, my foot is down, we are accelerating ish, not hard. Uh, and uh, yeah, four and uh, a half hours to go. So we shall tell you more about this little car as we go and more about our plans. Well, we're about uh, two hours in. I've just done a, a big stint in this little car. Isn't the styling gorgeous? Don't, don't they look absolutely beautiful? Uh, I always loved the Cinquecento and uh, always wanted a Cinquecento Sporting, but this isn't quite a late one. Look on an R plate, it's about a 97, I think, uh, which means it has a slightly later dashboard and a very ugly, I'm told, steering wheel. Ah, you should the best bit. Okay. Um, so this is where Italians keep their drugs. Ha-ha! Airbag? Nope. Nope. Got it on the Seicento, not on the Cinquecentos. Well, there the we go. Ones anyway. It's a good, good job we're not going through any border crossings then. Although we are in England, so uh, I will say I'm, I'm finding the pedal position a little cramped, but it's not too bad. See the throttle pedal sticks out slightly to the right. So I just had a bit of a leg stretch in Shrewsbury, uh, but so we still got two and a half hours to go. Great. Uh, yeah, we seem to have a lot of traffic here in um, Shrewsbury at the moment, unfortunately, but we can take in the uh, exquisite details of this later Cinquecento. Apparently it has Seicento stalks, which have the light control here. So the old light position is now just blanking plugs ahoy. So there's some detailed knowledge I did not know. But I think what's surprising me about this car is um, refinement. Mm, it's actually yeah. a really refined little thing, given the engine's ancient. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a tiny little car. I expected the engine noise to be far worse, but when you're cruising along, it's lovely. And Italians could have walked in with two buttons and a piece of pasta and paid for one. This I mean, is true. It was not an expensive car. No. And not technically Italian, of course. No. No. But uh, I, I love, you know, big tea shelf here. Uh, no glove box, just a, just a shelf. Uh, oh, you didn't tell me you got music. Yeah, I will. I'll, I'll, I'll not watch your video. I'll try and, yeah. I'll watch the road. Yeah, you, you watch the road. I'll um, check out. What was that? Curiosity killed the cat? I, I could just look at the thing, couldn't I? I don't have to look at that. <laughs> oh, Tony's Trent Derby. He's changed his name since. Yes. Dead or Alive, classic. That's a really good um, collection of music. 
so we're sorted for entertainment which is good because the roads are a bit boring from this point on we are almost onto dual carriageway uh, the sun is beginning to set on our um, first stage of the adventure we're still blatting along in the little fiat doing uh, about 70 at the moment and uh, yeah it's apart from a diversion because the m54 was closed not ideal uh, it hasn't been a bad run at all so we're nearing cambridge which is our overnight halt and then on to even more adventuring tomorrow well good morning it is uh, far too early in the morning it is 20 past four and we're in the second car of the trip we're aboard uh, a volvo xc60 I believe, uh, which is very peacefully whisking us to Stansted Airport uh, for a plane. This felt like such a good idea several weeks ago, but at the moment, bleh. yeah, we're on the, um, I think it's 25 to 7 flight, uh, and then we've got a full day in Turin. Woohoo! So, huge thanks to Sean, Morsels and Motors, stroke also driven. Uh, for uh, transporting us to the airport. Voiceover mode. Uh, this is uh, Stansted Airport, lots of planes there. This was an enormous weather spoons. And then I was really pleased to discover that the toilets were closed. Gee, cheers London Stansted. Uh, then we went on this shuttle thing to get from one terminal to the other. And uh, this is my attempt to be nice and artistic all early in the morning as we headed to our plane. So we're heading for the gate at this point, and here we are at the gate, and there goes our plane. Only, obviously, it isn't our plane, uh, because, uh, yeah, I'm here filming it. But here we go, accelerating now. Um, we are set to toga, possibly, possibly, take off and go around. Thrust level might be derated, don't know, but uh, waiting for it, waiting for it. Uh, they are accelerating up to speed. Uh, pilot monitoring will call V1 and then rotate and up she goes any moment now I'm just like those airport live streamers but uh, rubbish there she goes V1 rotate and into the air she goes V1 is the speed at which you have to commit it's like we're going so fast we can't stop we must take off uh, there is our plane a 16 year old Boeing 737-800 of the NG generation and uh, some very poor footage of Italy as we were flying in. I was sat in the aisle seat, so I had to kind of zoom in. And then we reached Turin, where we found this car. I, I don't know what it is, I forgot. And uh, a Lancia Delta Integrale to welcome you to Turin. And also a Citroen C0, we discovered. And then uh, I filmed a bit of random footage uh, as we had a Mercedes, electric Mercedes van shuttle. Uh, here comes, that looks our first panda spot, that was. Well, here we are. Welcome to Turin. Uh, we've got a few shots of us uh, coming through the airport, which understandably has uh, a few cars in it. Lancia Libra, is it? Little Lancia? Uh, we're hoping to score a Fiat Panda. Uh, Fiat Panda Hybrid is what we're after. There are two uh, cheekily sitting behind me, and then we're going to go exploring. There we go. We got ourselves a Panda complete with all the panda writing in the door trims and uh, somewhere to store your bottles that's good and apparently we're trying to reset the clock here we are then let's try and work out how to get out of here first of all we can take that way hopefully uh, oh, we need some I fan we don't need that much hot on what the hell it's it, it's a lake does some aircon yes we've got aircon it's a very posh panda thank you yeah, it's a very posh panda So how hybrid are these things? Uh, I'm very, very not hybrid. Oh, okay. Uh, you've got a laptop battery under your seat. Mm-hmm. And... Um, oh, it's right-hand drive. Uh, Utility truck. Yeah. Um, Ooh, clutch is a bit uh, on the um, fear side. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's a laptop battery under your seat and a one horsepower combined starter motor and... Oh, we're coming back up here to go up there, I think. Oh, okay. This route avoids congestion on RA10. Oh, well, thank you. You're on the fastest route. You should reach your destination by 10.43. So, our um, third vehicle of the In trip, the... Yards, shut up! Roundabout, take 
the fourth exit and stay on Strada Laney, SP10. Try again. The um, third vehicle of the Oh my god, Fiat 500. Oh god. Look at that. Oh, that's adorable. Yes, our third vehicle was an electric Mercedes in minibus, which almost got crashed into on the Strand. Shut up! That is too loud. Okay. A quiet person. Let, 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 us, let us do something about that. Take the slip road to Tangentiale. She's upside down. I don't do upside down. Oh, is that the problem? No, no, it's just me because I'm quite confused. Yeah, oh, listen to that. Oh, little three. Girl. 70 horsepower. Not a bad wiping performance, good overlap, no triangle of doom. Feels a little bit more lumpy than the 500 I had recently. Oh, okay. Maybe that's just me. Uh, because it was, I, I find it particularly smooth, which was obviously coming off the back of the Dacia Jogger, which wasn't. Six-speed gearbox. Yep. Shops are good. One. This this feels really nice. Mm, it also feels analog. Yeah. Which is what I liked about it. It's got an air conditioning button. Yeah. It's got a volume. Ooh. For the radio. Tactile. Um, you know, it, it just it feels analog. It feels like you know, if something went wrong with this car, you could possibly fix it yourself. Yeah. I flipped the camera, but mic of it. Oh no, it's not too bad actually. Can Do you, you readjust that? Uh... Get your head in. Oh, I'm trying to get your head in as well. Oh, you want the two of us? So yeah, not a bad flight. A bit of turbulence, but nothing too shaky. It kept people from wandering up and down the aisles and annoying us. It did. And I got over the wing seat, so I got extra leg room. But unfortunately, uh, the uh, fact that there was turbulence, they put the seatbelt sign on and that meant I couldn't get my sandwich out of the overhead locker. So I've just hastily had my sandwich breakfast. Delicious. And now we are gonna head into Turin and find uh, the Centro Storico. Oh, very good. Did you practice that? Yes. Oh, but In front of the mirror, I'm just going, do I look Italian? Yeah, I noticed every time that we walked up to one of the Italians, they automatically spoke in English to us. Yes. Because we obviously don't look Italian. No, we just glow white. And yeah. they're just like, ah. Okay. I think also the fact as well that neither of the two of us are painfully stylish. Oh, that could be it. Yeah. Yeah. Virtually all the Italians were painfully stylish at 6 a.m. this morning. Yes. Yeah. yeah um, she'll head into Turin and hopefully show you something more interesting than our faces. Well, Google has taken us off the motorway, which was, or Autostrada rather, which was um, looking completely gridlocked. And. Now we are driving around wondering where we are. In yards, oh, good grief! Oh, That's not a bad ride, to be fair. I will say the suspension's pretty good. There are some horrendous potholes about. It's just like being in England. It is like just everyone has a panda. Pandas everywhere. Yeah. yeah. You can see why I come here on holiday. Yeah, yeah. So why are we going to the Centro Storico Museum? Oh, me? Yeah, yeah, come on. Oh, um, our friend Matteo went a few weeks ago and found out that it was closing down. Um, it Ooh. hasn't actually been open since about 2019. Wow. It's a completely volunteer-run um, ex-fate employee type mm -hmm. establishment. And Lovely they, building on a hill there. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, they basically... Um, Obviously, those people were at the highest risk of COVID, so it hasn't been open in about four years. Fate are probably going to sell the building off because it's in downtown Turin. Oh, um, it's the original 2000. I was going to say, but isn't it an, an original? Isn't it the first company expanded into that in yeah. like the 1900s, the 1909. early 1909? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So it's really the first proper proper custom made Fate factory. Yeah, yeah. Um, but they now have their massive museum at Mirafiore, okay. the Fate Hub. Mm -hmm. And I think they're probably going to merge the two. So the, 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 the exhibits will still be able to be seen, but the building, I think, is going to probably be sold because it's worth a fortune. So Matteo tells me. Okay. And our communication with the museum was also sounded very final. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, let's go and see what all the fun is about. That'll probably be a separate video, to be honest, because uh, we're doing one on the trip. Oh, we've got a scrapyard. 
Let's not get too excited. Oh God! We may get too excited. I need bits. Can you get a seat back on like Ryanair? Yeah, good luck with that. What is this Mini doing? The most aggressive three-point turn I've ever seen. Welcome to Italy. The old app, eh? Brilliant. No, no. Oh yeah, who knew? There we go. Cut the camera going for that one. We're just recording traffic scenes, folks. It'll actually probably be quite popular because there's loads of stuff here that you just never see back then. Yeah, home. yeah, like these Lancia based on the Fiat idea. What do we agree on? Mir Mira? Mira? Myra? 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 Oh, yeah. Having it honked up. Mm. Watch out for trams. Because I almost got us flattened by a tram. I didn't even know they had trams. Now I do. I'm really glad you did it, not me. I was just getting very confused by the um, people ahead of us. 500. Oh, yeah. That's two 500s already. They were just driving very weirdly for what I consider it to be a roundabout. Oh, by the way, um, theoretically, they do have like a, an, like a, an emissions thing here to try and get rid of stuff like that, but just nobody cares. Oh, okay. Yeah, hence why you still see these in the city centre. It is rather lovely. So lovely lamps hanging across the road. Lovely old buildings. It certainly feels like we're a long way from home. Dacia Sandero, first generation. Oh, yeah, yeah. And it's the... The one it? James May wanted us to get and we never did. And it's the, what do you call it, one? Stepway? Mmm. I don't think they were called Stepway back then, but it's the... It's got the goblins. Yeah. Oh, this is rather... So you're saying that was the way the minis drove across yeah, to the right? Yeah, that one, and as I say, because you, you can see there the way they were raced along the, the sides. Yeah, well... They also film Fast and the Furious here as well. Right. There's one of the episodes, there's one of those. But yes, that is the main square up there. Oh, okay, to and our right. And that is where that was full of Fiat 500s so with about, people. Ooh, over there. Yeah. Ish. Yeah, so that was full of Fiat 500s with people honking at each other. Our penny we merge here. And we've got a little Innocenti uh, Mini there. Now it's just trying to force his way into our lane. I'd have let you in, I'm just saying. Is that him? Is that the smell of him? Mmm, it could be. It smells of pure hydrocarbons, doesn't it? Oh, look at that! Is he just squeezing down the inside of him? Yes. Brilliant. So here we are. This remarkable building is where we just had lunch at uh, Osteria del Fiat, which uh, apparently stands for hurry up, up hurry up at the table. So we did, we ate very quickly. But yeah, lovely little place full um, of um, also, all sorts of magic stuff. We had two courses, glass of wine, you had water, and it came to 23 pounds. 23 pounds or 23 euros? 23 pounds. 23 pounds, that, that's nothing. But uh, the real excitement here is around the corner. And uh, it's hard to believe you just walk down this very normal street and then you are faced with the mighty Lingotto plant. So this is where Fiat and Lancia cars were built until the mid 80s. Yeah. yeah. And this is the one that has the famous test track on the roof, which we can't see today because it's closed. Uh, we will come back and do further explanations. There's now all sorts in here. It looks like we've got the police, we've got uh, shops down the far end as well. And uh, the, the really nice thing is they have sunshine here. What's it, is this the control for the traffic lights? <laughs> it's like the Italian job. Clunk. <laughs> so there we go. This building on the left is apparently for PR and schmoozing. And then this enormous building is the uh, former factory. Gosh, what an incredible thing. So this is quite um, a leap up from where we were at the Centro Storico. Wow. Um, can you see? Wow. That's a thing. Okay, let's do that then. So, sorry, it's not the police, it's, it's the Polytechnic area, it's the um, college. And this remarkable thing is in it. I'm not sure we're meant to be in it, but hey, we're here now. Do you know what it is? Nope. I'm guessing it's based on a Fiat 600 or 850, yeah. isn't it? 
rear engine. That's extraordinary. What the steering wheel controls is, it's maybe based on a multiplot? Oh yeah, could be. We don't know, we have no idea. But it is absolutely breathtaking. Wow. We're still walking down the very long Lingotto building because we're stopping in this hotel which is in it. So this should be interesting. Yeah, this is an astonishing space in itself. We've got a little uh, Fiat Doppelino. This is a later post-war facelift version. They give it a bit of a rejigged front end to make it look more like a 1400. In about 1952, I'm guessing. Well, there we go. We've just had a lovely um, little snackette after our uh, main meal here. But um, we're going back out the doors again. Uh, apparently we're not staying here. It's quite expensive. But it is very lovely. The staff are very lovely. Got some lovely artwork. It's um, well worth checking out. Uh, Jim tells me our, our place is even better. So we'll um, show you that shortly. Oh, here we go. The Lingotto. Whoa. Uh, let's go wide. That's the ramp that goes up to the top of the building to get you onto the racetrack. And uh, Jimmy's very excited because they've got some Topolinos here. For those who don't know, there is already the uh, Opal Roxy version of the Citroen Ami. But uh, these are the Fiat Topolinos. So they're doing a, a collab with um, Walt Disney because uh, Topolino is Little Mouse so they're getting Mickey involved oh gosh I didn't realise the rear lights are different as well unlike the uh, Ami which uses the same panel front and rear bit of differentiation on the Topolino wow we're now um, walking up the ramps there's a limit to how far you can go there's a big barrier there but uh, in the meantime we, we can just walk up Imagine the many, many Fiat's that came down here. The idea being that your raw materials coming at a ground level. All the production goes on as you go up. Quick blast around the test track and then down the ramps and off for dispatch. It's a reminder, there was obviously a vaccination center or something up here. So uh, a reminder of what was in the past. But uh, here we go. They've even got a gym. He's an angel. We all knew it. Uh, they've even got a bloody McDonald's here. But, uh, oh well. We've got glass elevators. And, uh, yeah, this amazing shopping precinct. Wow. Don't go to McDonald's, folks. This isn't advertising. There are much better options. Pretty much anything. So, this is the middle. Um, garden of the uh, Lingotto plant. We, we were down in that hotel just there uh, having a drink and someone had a tiramisu. I don't know who that was. It wasn't me. But uh, yeah, it's quite a remarkable space. So good to see a remarkable building like this being used. Apparently there's some um, Agnelli family um, stuff here. His books, art collection. Is the art collection on the roof? Art collection's on the roof. Which is up there. And the bookstore then is um, an arts bookstore which relates to the art they have on the roof. Aha, uh -huh. very nice. No, this is where we're staying, in this hotel, which is a little more dated, cozy. Um, we've got a fridge and one electricity point, possibly two. Let's not get carried away. Uh, a television, but I'm probably not going to use. And a bathroom with all mod cons, including a bum washer. Uh, it's all a bit dated, but it's all here. Look at the hairdryer. A cubicle shower. And one of those toilets where you can't actually put the toilet seat up. It doesn't fit. It's fine. We'll be good. Go, fixed. Yeah, here we go. 
It is quite warm, but I don't appear to have a control for the um, air conditioning unit. Maybe I'm not allowed to use it at this time of year. And this is the view. I've got a campus opposite with this bright orange, some lovely decor, uh, the air conditioning units. And uh, this is downtown Lingotto. Mm. But I'm utterly done in at this point. So I'm going to call an end to this video. We're going to have a bit of a siesta, the Italian siesta. I feel they should. We've had a, a really good lunch and uh, I'm feeling the effects thereof. So um, I'm going to have a bit of a snooze. And then we're going out tonight. We're going to meet um, a friend of Jim's, Matteo, who's written a book on the Alfa Romeo Arna. That's all you need to know. And apparently writing a second. And then we're going to do more exploring tomorrow before we get the plane back tomorrow night. So plenty more to come. So thank you very much for watching. Don't forget you can support what we do by heading to the Hubnut store. These fleet t-shirts are now in stock. And we'll see you soon. Bye. Art, I guess. Oh, look, cars. Wow, okay. That was unexpected. In Italian, these were called mascherone.